Welcome to The Cleaning, the Cleaning a podcast about Apple TV Plus's new show, Silo. My name's Bubba, and with me, as always, is someone who's about to do a job he's clearly unqualified to do. It's Catfish. Oh, Bubba, I am so glad that you are finally talking about something other than vomit. I've had to hear, listen to you talk about it for the last half hour. So finally, we will get to do the podcast for episode three. That's right, Catfish. Now, I do have some bad news. Tell me. Bernard ran the numbers, and it turns out Paul Billings would be a much better choice for podcast host than you. But we're going we're gonna to keep you as a host. I wondered why Common was at my door. With some, with some tarts. Hey, <laughs> guys, we're talking about season one, episode three, Machines. Mm-hmm. In her hunt for a new sheriff, Mayor Johns clashes with Bernard. Juliet strikes a deal to keep the generator running. Disclaimer right at the top. In mm-hmm. the body of this podcast, for all, you know, 98% of this podcast, there are going to be no spoilers. But at the mm-hmm. end, after we talk about your great feedback, we have so much great listener feedback this week. Love it. Our book talk is going to be divided into two things. The first part of the book talk is going to be no spoilers slash light spoilers, a bit like we did on our first podcast about episode one. But then after that, we are going to jump into those evil spoilers. You'll have a lot of chance to jump out. We've both read the books. I read it and I remember it and I loved it. Catfish, you read the book and? I pretty much have forgotten 98% of it. I remembered they were in a silo. Well, let's not assume at this point. (laughs) Hey, okay, Catfish, uh, we've done enough talking. Episode three, Machines. What is your rating out of 10? Well, Bubba... I'm going to start off giving this 6.4 out of 10, what I like to call triple E's. Wait, triple E's? Yeah, that's when you are got something that's got a lot of flights to it, and you choose either elevators or escalators. But you must make a choice, Bubba. Okay. I am still confused why people are so upset about the sheriff. At one point, there's like, people says, I, I wrote it down in, later on, that you know, people are like people are scared because there's no sheriff. Is it the specific sheriff? The sheriff. The sh- people are scared because they don't they don't have a sheriff to protect them from things. Like what what things are they worried about? There are different clues that don't seem to add up about what the sheriff does. Who's really in charge of replacing the sheriff? I mean, the mayor is, but she gets leaned on, and she seems to. It, it, this seems to be heavy leaning, but I guess she's the final choice. You know, I complained last week, jokingly, about the two minutes we spent finding A, the clue at the end of the uh, longest string in the world, and B, (laughs) the uh, longest climb down to a pool in the history of mankind. Mm. That pales into comparison to the time we spent tonight on the generator in this episode. Bubba, okay, I mean, it's interesting, but... I'm here for the mystery, and I'm not really too wrapped up into the lives of everybody. Like, this generator, they made it a big deal. First of all, they expect me to believe that in the history of this silo, that a generator has never been taken offline once. Okay, nah. But they spent so much time on this. And again, exciting, but I'm not interested. So I have the 6.4... Before I have to give it the double P, which we all know is oh no, the pre pre tax Ooh. when they use that old lingo when our therapist slash machinist says to the mayor, "You up toppers." Whoa! So deducted that, one point for that. What do you mean by you up toppers? You up toppers. Five point four. It ends up triple E's either elevator or escalator. <clears throat> really down on this episode, Bubba. You were so high last week. You I was. Last I'm, week. I'm, uh, well, and here's the thing. You know, we were just talking about before we started podcasting. You're like, hey, this is ten episodes. Maybe we could use a tighter. <laughs> and and this is what I thought right here in this episode was like, maybe they couldn't keep going. We had somebody out the door, uh, somebody cleaning in episode one, somebody cleaning in episode two. But this field felt like a real slowdown in the pace, Bubba. Again, they're like, you know what would be great? Let's spend 25 minutes dealing with this generator issue. Man. I say no, Bubba. But okay, so that's me. I'm down five. Let me let me say this generator. Yeah. This generator is yeah. an interesting thing in that some people love that storyline. And then I've seen people online 
like you, Catfish. I can't wait to get to listener feedbacks on it. What's fun about this podcast is we are wildly swinging back and forth. Yeah. Well, so, I've been up on this the whole time. To- the whole time, the first two episodes. That's true. That's true. I was, I've, I've loved it. I was down on last week. You're, you know, pretty down on this week. I'm going to go above you on this week, and I'm going to give this eight double A's out of ten. What? Yeah. D- wait. No double A's. Well, when the mayor and a deputy are getting busy, yeah. double A, as we all, all know, stands for AARP After Dark. Mayor Johns and Deputy Marnes, mm. you know, they're going to get a mm. bottle of wine. Mm. And um, you were they're talking about people sick. every episode going out for a cleaning where they're about to get messy. Mayor Johns, literally. Ooh, spoiler. Oh, man. End of the episode. I got three words for you, Bubba. Yeah. So many wrinkles. <laughs> hey, I, I, I was high on it. The, the, okay. I, am, I am actually going down two points for another thing that, really upset me as a book reader who remembers the story or I would be even higher. I think they made great drama. You don't think, you know, TV episodes you watch so long. It's like on a, on a show about, you know, Grey's Anatomy, is Meredith Grey going to die? No, but if she's intense and somehow you and his audience member can feel tense, you're like, oh, that's pretty successful here. Okay. The generator will go out. Everybody at the silo will die. That would be a real interesting (laughs) tweak to do in episode three. So you don't think the generator is going to blow up, but still, I thought it was, I I thought it was very uh, handled very um, dramatically. And so eight out of 10, there are things from the book that I really love. There are things that from the book to make a TV show adaption. I think they did a lot of great stuff on, but oh yeah, in the book talk, Another two-point deduction for a uh, a mini rant coming up in the spoilers part of the book rant. But, oh, Bubba, this podcast is going to kill you. I know, <laughs> I know. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You're gonna find me in the bathroom with a bloody mouth. <laughs> oh no! Don't commit suicide like the mayor did. Right? Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> of course. What could have happened? All right. Hey. <laughs> yeah. We love to say. Who cares what we think? We want to know, listeners, what you think. If you're mm-hmm. listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podomatic, if you're listening to this on YouTube, we care what you think. And we want you to tell us what you think. I mentioned we got great feedback so far. You can reach out to us on Twitter and Instagram at Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, Double PHQ on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Catfish, what do mm-hmm. they need to smash if they're watching this on YouTube? Well, they need to smash that like button, Bubba. But oh, also, please, there's a subscribe please. button they can they can, they can can smash. Oh. They can also give us some great feedback. I don't know whether you captured or not. I haven't looked at the log, but there was great feedback where somebody uh, started listening to it and then said, I am out of here because I can't stand you guys. Yeah, that was, that's a spoiler for the feedback almost. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we read all feedback, even somebody who said, I do not find this entertaining. Goodbye. <laughs> so, hey. Catfish, we're going to break down this episode, go through every bit of it. Like I said, we're going to have book talk at the yep. end. We're going to have your feedback. Yep. But, hey, we got to start it like we love to start it with one of our judicial debates. This is where we enter judicial and we debate to see what's going mm. on. So, Catfish, mm. what's on the docket for this week? Well, uh, the, the first uh, case on the docket is what is the most disgusting drinkable fluid featured in this episode okay uh we start off with uh juliet drinking something she's 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 down there in the in the, in the down under so god mm-hmm. knows how they process that right uh the booze that the mayor tries to bribe bernard with no that brandy the booze that barnes is that Barnes is choosing from slash stealing before <laughs> the mayor's suicide or the water the mayor and Marnes carry Bubba, oh, man. your those choice are, or off the board? Those are all good choices. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm going to go like Bernard. I don't care if Brandy is before the, is from the before times. I'm not a Brandy drinker. So to me, that is the most disgusting alcohol in this episode. Listeners, if you see me out at a bar, I will drink yeah. almost anything you pay for. But for me, <laughs> I'm not going to buy Brandy. So for me... That's the most disgusting alcohol in the episode. How about you, Catfish? I know uh, people looking at you on YouTube think, boy, mm-hmm. that guy must drink. What, what is the most disgusting alcohol for you? You know, they say you go to certain countries, you should never drink anything unless you open the cap of it. 
Oh, and boy. so I'm going to go with that same rule here in the silo and say that the worst thing to drink is is whatever Juliet's drinking, because I can't imagine it's probably the, the runoff from the generator. Right. It's cooked in the steam. <laughs> All right, Bubba. Yeah. Now we have our weekly debate, which I call better or worse. Whoa. Based on evidence just from this episode, mm-hmm. do people in the silo have it better or worse than you and I do right now, Bubba? Anything from the episode, what do you think? Is the same a choice, Catfish? The same is a choice, Bubba. The only okay. thing you can't mention is the elevators because now that is too obvious. Okay. You know, believe it or not, there are some people who would call my career an engineer. And so it made me feel very good to see these mechanics. And when they were describing the big generator, they were like, yeah, the power source, the steam. We got no idea where that comes from. <laughs> and so to see engineers as inept in their jobs as I am as mine, I say it's the same as at current times. Thank you, Silo, for making me feel better about myself. Well, Bubba, after seeing how they get their power and knowing the way their computer systems are, yeah. I say they have it better because Whoa. their utilities can't be hacked. <laughs> Don't. I want to make uh, editing political jokes out of my mind as I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Bubba. Yeah. As you uh, think of all the wonderful things you could say, let's indeed start instead start talking about this episode. Yeah, let's get on the stairwell down into the episode. We're going to break up this podcast. We're going to start and just deal with all the Mayor Johns and Deputy Martin stuff before they reach mechanics. Then we'll deal with the mechanics and then the storylines will combine and we'll continue. So love it. I love how their storyline began. These characters I'm calling judicial goons are ominously staring down at Mayor Johns. They're intimidating the mayor, the person in charge. I like this. I mean, we're going to get to it. This is the whole question of who's really in charge. I guess you would presume from this episode that the mayor is really supposed to be in charge, but the judicial has gone, uh, as I said last week, maybe a little extra judicial. (laughs) They and, might, me, Bubba, yeah. have had something to do with her her suicide. <laughs> no comment. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know me. The one th- a couple of things I love is mm-hmm. hashtag ice cold this is. And this is the way they greet each other. Mayor Johns to the deputy. You look tired already. I was hoping to meet Juliet Nichols before you keel over. <laughs> and then Deputy Marnes, his big comeback is. We'll see who gets tuckered out. <laughs> you know what's so Dude. sad, Bubba, is I thought we'd have a new ongoing section. Oh, what do you mean? The Double M. Double M. Yeah, Mocking Mayor no. with her ice cold slam of the week. I love it. I think her mocking days are over, Bubba. Well, let me say these two, they're just like us. They're the olds. <laughs> now, they, they walk by judicial And there's a bit of a debate. Hey, do we go see Judge Meadows? No, we're not going to see it. No, we're not going to see it. But she stops by just to make sure that they see her. She's throwing what little weight she has around. And that's when he also calls her guards goons very hurtful. Yeah, I mean, this is this is, as it's later going to be called by Bernard, a, a bit of a squabble. You know, people power play by these two. But we're seeing hashtag besties. Deputy Marnes, he pulls the water out of her back sack and he takes a sip and she's drinking out of his backpack. Hashtag besties. This is our first hint that, yeah, they're going to see Juliet. That's a euphemism for let's do it. (laughs) I'm going to be really worried now here. You know, we've uh, a podcast about another show, The Last Kingdom. Kingdom. Yep. And the problem with a lot of people that hang out with Uchard is, when you really start to get to know them in an episode, that's the one that they're going to die. So you know who the harbinger of death here is in this show is Deputy Marnes. <laughs> Do not spend time with Deputy Marnes. First you Holston, were... now the mayor. Well, perhaps he's the one killing everybody. Now it below, is. It's, his, it's his power. It's his power play. He wanted right. to be the sheriff, and then she wouldn't make him sheriff. Boom. Well, yeah, and his way to be sheriff is like, I've seen Game of Thrones. You don't want to have the power. So I'll say, oh, no, I don't want to be sheriff. I want to retire. Okay, I'll get somebody else. Wait, what? 
Now, below judicial, they find mm-hmm. IT. Hey, we haven't been back here since episode one. And Bernard, even he's kind of a, a little snarky. You get snarky in the silo. <laughs> I'm going to apply. I'm going to apl- applaud you, old lady, for walking the silo. Ouch. Yeah, she's got some booze for him for help with the judge. And uh, he is he's like, I don't think this is going to help. So what's amazing, Bubba, is, I mean, you and I, we we both ha- deal with I.T. departments. Oh, yeah. And they're pretty important when you're dealing with computer. But not usually in the politics of the office are they as involved as they are here in the silo. You know why? Why? Because they look through everybody's emails. Oh, I love it. Well, I also love the set. The way the set works is so we saw a cafeteria on the top level. We've seen a cafeteria on the, I guess what you'd call the bottom level where mechanics go to eat. And they're designed similarly, but you can kind of tell based on the design whose it is. And to me, Bernard's office is just a different version layout wise of the mayor's office. So it's like they just, you know, they have one style for this type of office and we just repeat, repeat, repeat. These founders, whoever built this silo, they're very efficient. I love that. Now, M- Marn says, uh, you know, the mayor gives him another another little elbow in the side, and he says, oh, yeah. I'm not getting anything but grief for joining you in this march of death. I know. Now, I've he already warned jumped- her, Bubba. Yeah. He was warning her, mm-hmm. and she wouldn't listen to his warning. Spoiler alert. Now, Bernard, mm-hmm. he's a true IT computer geek, He's like, you know, I don't want to get in this power play. I'm just looking at my numbers. And my numbers tell me who's going to be a good sheriff and who's going to be a bad sheriff. And looking at my numbers, the judicial's choice of Paul Billings, he'd probably be pretty good. He's the most favorable candidate, Catfish. Let's go for it. But then Deputy Marnes, ooh everybody's got a little little dig, a little snark in him. Is that the best sheriff for the silo or for IT? Mm, trouble, trouble, trouble. You know, we need a sheriff for everybody, Bubba. Bernard's numbers claim that Holston would be a great choice for sheriff. And he was a great sheriff until he wasn't. And I wrote, yeah, Bernard <laughs> yeah. was nice until he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, somebody needs to question those numbers. But you know what? There's one thing you can't question. And, and, and Bubba, this is the only time I will ever, probably ever be with Bernard uh, this entire series. Okay. It just says, okay, uh, ignoring the numbers, she steals tape. Yeah, Juliet. She stole heat tape that prevent the servers from cooking. Thief. She's a thief. Do you want a thief as your sheriff? Nobody knows crime better than a thief. I mean, come on. You know, you're right. Somehow IT has a it can help sway a battle with judicial. But Bernard, you know, he's kind of, once again, he's nice until he isn't. Mayor, bringing me a bottle of brandy is not going to help you win a turf war with Judge Meadows. Mayor Johns is like, listen, that's good brandy. And he's like... It could be for, from the four times for all I care. And then he says, I guess this is his numbers. He's saying every moment we don't have a sheriff, the silo is in trouble. And, and, and the mayor says they're fighting because they don't know who is going to protect them. And this is what <clears throat> I was saying earlier. Who do they feel they need protecting from? As much as you could steal in such a in such a tight environment, you know, everybody would know if you stole something normally. I guess if there was crime, mm-hmm. The t- you would do crime after a sheriff was gone. Like, there's no sheriff. Okay, this is probably the best time to commit crime, maybe? I mean, well, we're I mean, having to assume that, some of these Except for the fact that, you know, there's so many levels here, and really uh, most of the stuff is, being, is happening at the local level. People aren't, like, yeah. walking up 50 floors to take care of something. You know, we still have Pete Postlewaite's uh, son, uh, the, the, Hank Adam, in the, the Adam in the Driver deep. lookalike. He's so, in the down I deep, mean, care. He can't save me. He can't save me no, up but here. That's, that's what I'm saying. But he's in the down deep, taking care of the down deep people. Well, Anyway, I wonder if they're trying to hint at something bigger. There's two, three things that could be happening. One, they're trying to hint at something bigger. Two, I'm not getting it. Three, there's nothing to get, or AK, they will never explain it. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll, we'll I will have mean, to see. No we are only in episode three. Knowing the history of podcasting, though, almost 10 years, Bubba, there's yeah. a good chance that I just am not getting it. And oh, I want to yeah. make that want to make that clear. Yeah, I think that's what Bernard's numbers say. It's very <laughs> much <laughs> what do we have to tell you? This trip is not just a booty call with Deputy Marnes. It's not okay. just a dis okay. judicial. But hey, the mayor's got to do some campaigning, got to do some glad handing, got to go kiss some babies when you may run for re-election. Heck yeah. All those people voted for. 
I've got a knit. I've got a knit. What was she? She knitting scarves, knitting stuff for people. Everybody who has a baby gets a a knitting special. Let's go. Now, I want to know. Okay. One thing. Is the voting by hand or by machine? And if so, are those machines programmed by Bernard? Oh, boy. Working for Dominion. (laughs) You just couldn't help yourself, you terrible. (laughs) I get Terrible it. Joker. I get it. I get you know it. who else can't help himself? Oh. It's Sir Friend's own Jora Mormon, Dr. Peter Nichols, with uh, a, a lot of shadowy history with his daughter Juliet and shadowy accent. I assume that's American. What did you think of Ian Glenn, who we love as an actor, who's a good actor, who whose voice, you know, it could be that we just know him so much that seeing him with a different voice is freaking us out. What what do you think of this accent he does, Kev? It's not just the accent. The, the, the tenor of his voice is different. Oh, yeah? He's got a lot. High, he, sounds, he sounds more like, you know, usually, Bubba, he sounds like you. But here he sounds like me. Higher, readier, mm. less Ooh. authoritative. Oh. Not knowledgeable. <laughs> stupid. Hey. You know, like that. <laughs> Wait, don't do that to Dr. Peter Nichols. Come on. Now, this show loves flashbacks. Thank you, Thank you for protecting him, and but not me. No. <laughs> but this show loves flashbacks. And I wrote, I, I thought to myself, well, Dr. Nichols is getting a verbal flashback as he talks about his daughter, Juliet, who left for the down deep when she was only 13 years old. Ouch. And the mayor's like, well, gee, how often do you see your daughter? It's been a while. Ouch. <laughs> Bad dad. Let's go. So Happy Father's Day. So there was something going on there that they're alluding to that presumably we will hear about or see some other time. Or it was very clear and I just didn't get it. That's always I have to make sure that's always an option, Bubba. Well, do you I think would, I don't get it or you think they're going to explain more? Well, I, I'm sure they're going to I assume they're going to explain more. But what okay. I would say is, as a viewer, you may also try to put a couple of things together. I believe it was in episode Two, where Juliet told Sheriff Holston, he's like, have you ever seen a dead body before? And she said, I saw my mother and my brother. And she mentioned those ages about being 12 and 13. And so I would assume the, you know, to lose your mother and your brother at such a young age and then go down deep. It's because you don't want to be around anything that reminds you of them, possibly. Or it could have something to do where she blames her father for their deaths. We're going to have to find out. All right. So he killed him. I just want to make make that clear. You're saying that's he killed your him. prediction. Is that is that a prediction? From no, no. Somebody no I, thought what, I thought that's what you were saying. Oh, but he killed him. Uh, I'm. You said it. I am not Put saying it in the show notes. I am not putting say <laughs> delete it from the show notes. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. All right. You know what? Yeah. Tell me. If you could have lunch mm-hmm. in the cafeteria with a view of the disgusting, you know, toxic world outside. Or you could have view in the park. Where would you have lunch? They went down, what do you think? 40, 45, 50 flights of stairs? Mm-hmm. And they get to the best place in the whole silo I've seen. I want to have lunch here. This place is great. That doesn't make any sense. D- 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 up there in the ruling class, they should have the nicest uh, place in the world. But you know what? It reminds them. Um, you now, if it turned out that that uh, the mayor and Marnes didn't really have something... Bernie, this might be sexual harassment or uh, uncomfortable work environment. Uh, he basically tells sort of a story that like his first two busts were uh, about people in the park uh, having drunken sex. So it's kind of an inappropriate, but uh, in this case it works and it really gets her going. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, right. She's like, well, do you want to make a third arrest? <laughs> A-A-R-P after dark. And, of course, who shows up but a henchman carrying a strawberry tart? This is the least worst table service ever. Three-star review. This is terrible. It is Rob Sims with the compliments from Judge Meadows. You know, gee, everybody likes Paul S- Paul Billings as well as everybody loves strawberries. Here you go. No, the, she refuses to eat the strawberry. Yeah. Bubba, I'd be all in on it. I mean, I'd be like, mm, you know what? This tastes really good. But you know what doesn't taste good? Paul Billingsley. Get out of Wait. here. <laughs> Why? You don't know Paul Billings. He could be great. <laughs> Everything I've heard about him is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what is this like? This is like 
say you're an actor and you go to audition and then you give them a gift basket. You're like, Hey, I really want the job. Here's a gift basket. We really want the job to go to Paul Billings. Here's a, here's a strawberry tart. You agree? What do you think? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, it's, it's nice to have, you know, it's nice to have relationships with people Oh yeah, and to make suggestions, of course. but you have to respect their, uh, you have to respect their final decision, Bubba. And Says don't you. eat those tarts that you oh. gave them. You leave them on the table and you walk away. Is this the most menacingly eaten strawberry in cinematic history? <laughs> I wanted him afterwards to say, It's good. I eat your strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I drink your strawberry milkshake. Oh, man. Okay, so... Man, it is confrontational. I guess Bernard's in the middle of this confrontation, even though his numbers say, I'm I'm, I'm with judicial. Let's go. We're going to pause on Mayor Johns and Deputy okay. Marnes' story for a bit. Let's go back to Juliet's story. And okay, this is actually another thing that should have me knocking another point off my rating. It Remember how last up. week I was talking about, look at this cliffhanger. She's at the end of her rope. What's going to happen? Oh, she'll just climb back up the rope. Great, <laughs> terrible cliffhanger. This well, this, Bubba, you didn't. Even, oh my God, you, just you terrible. thought it was a just terrible, terrible. You thought it was a terrible cliffhanger when she actually we actually thought she was going to do something. This right. is even worse when she doesn't even do anything. That's not even right. a cliffhanger. So let's rewrite it. So to, well, we won't change the story at all. But okay. to make it more thrilling, while she climbs down the rope and while she climbs it back up. She'll be drinking the alcohol then. So it really ties together that she has this PTSD. Now, of course, this is a silo. There's got to be limited water. Forget what a crazy conspiracy lady's doing with her zig. And so, of course, Juliet's never seen a pool. Getting in that water is going to be scary. She probably doesn't even have a tub. To hell with this. I'm going to go drink and then have traumatic flashbacks to my boy George. Mm, mm, mm. mm. I'm culture. I'm comma for you. I don't know Bore George's song. Sorry, what do you wow. say? Wow. Comma, 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 comma. If you're gonna, if you're gonna drop a thirty-year-old reference, there you go. You should at least be on it. I do leave my bedroom door open, but my front door is locked. But maybe I should leave it unlocked because my friend Shirley might just come in and get in bed with me and make herself comfortable with the excuse you were drunk. The door was open. Mm, Mama, problematic, I surely. If, I don't know if you've ever done this. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when you were young in college or whatever, yeah. You know, somebody was drunk. You didn't just wake them up. First of all, you you pulled some kind of prank on them. Um. Did you never do that? Maybe, oh man. Maybe. Our commentator, our commentator, the Black Kraken. Oh yeah. I lived with him in college. He got drunk and passed down the bedroom. So. I put fishnet stockings on him and took a picture. And let me tell you something, Bubba. Yeah. He's a lawyer now. And if I had that picture today, I wouldn't be working anymore. Man, well, you don't want to cross judicial. We know that. So don't do anything there. But okay, Juliet's wearing George's yeah. watch again. Holster told her not to. That's a no-no, Juliet. The oh, room starts to rumble. Juliet screams, my fix is failing. They run to the generator. And of course, who's working on it? It's the noob Cooper. Juliet, you know, why did I give this episode eight out of 10? She yeah, does the thing that everybody wants to do. Okay. She punches her intern. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Also, she's like, you get to drink and nobody says anything. <laughs> now, the, the foreman, I guess the leader, Knox, he's watching from the control room and he pulls Julie in for a talk. He, he's like, listen. That Cooper, he's your shadow. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. She's like, listen, I'm the generator whisperer. I can feel it. We got to fix this thing now. Right. And that's when they say, he's like, shut it down. What are you crazy? This thing has never been shut down. Well, hold on. I thought he implied it had never been shut down for long, like completely turned off. Like maybe you lower the power on it so you could do, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I misheard it. You're saying that he said it was never shut down. Yeah, it's never been shut down. Even if they only minorly, you know, things sometimes things have to be completely shut down for you to fix them. You can't just fix parts of it and have the still thing things still going. Anyway, plus plus mm -hmm. Knox apparently as the boss, he can decide what a punishment is for punching your shadow. 
you can either work the trash line or clear tickets with a fixer walker. Catfish, mm. what would you want to do? Would you want to work on the trash line or be there with old lady Walker in her repair shop? That depends. Do I have enough money to pay her for the therapy time? <laughs> oh, you get two. That's right. You get therapy as you fix stuff. Okay. Forget it, trash line. That's where we're going. Juliet, now, Juliet has a better answer. Yeah. What's her answer? She said, can I just let him punch me back? That would be good. I love it. Part of her punishment is you get to go home, take a shower, take a free day off. Juliet goes to Walker. Apparently, another toaster needs some therapy. Mm -hmm. And yet, she is totally projecting. She's taking out her anger on, theoretically, this mother figure in her life. And, of course, has to do exposition in it. You haven't left your workshop in 20 years. Hear that, viewers? Okay, so... And then she goes to George's landing spot. Boy, that's going to make you want to drink, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, I don't know. She's always thought, yapping along about things that need to be fixed. Maybe she can fix where br George broke the fan. <laughs> well, okay, this is where our storylines start to converge. We see a uh, down deep Deputy Hank. He brings in Deputy Marnes and the mayor. And they are entering while the generator and everything is going haywire. And Knox... Like a lot of people in middle management, he's like, oh, everything's fine. It's good. It's good. But then Juliet enters, and it is go time. And, and, you know, we talked about her accent a bit last week. I really only noticed it one time in this episode. But when she puts her hand to the generator, it's like, I need to listen. It was like, uh, what? <laughs> what accent is that? <laughs> sure. The mayor, of course, picks up on it. Wait, is that her? And to me, I thought the mayor is immediately smitten with Holston's pick. She's like, wait, this lady who's fixing the generator, who fixes things, let's go. She's going into action. That's right. Right. Then the mayor actually pieces out for a bit and says, I want to go talk to Walker. And it turns out Martha and the mayor are old friends. Catfish, what do you think? Wow. This silo is smaller than I thought. Well, 10,000 people, I guess, if you're around similar ages, I guess. Even if the mayor, you would assume, was always generally in the up top and we have Walker down here in the down deep. I mean, there's such good friends that the mayor knows it's, that Walker has a radio, which is forbidden by the pack. But it's like, OK, whatevs. Well, she knows her. But, yeah, it seems like they haven't seen each other in a really long time. Like the mayor has oh, yeah. come down to see her. In fact, and Walker has Walker, not left in little, 20 years. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, well, you came down to see Juliet, but not me. You're one of your good friends. Thanks right. a lot. Also, well, I want to let you know, I didn't vote for you. <laughs> I, listen, my wife chewed, my ex-wife chewed with her mouth open. You don't visit me to hell with everybody. I'm staying in my shop. Now, Catfish, you have been making some, mm -hmm. what I assume might be sarcastic jokes about the mayor committing suicide. Oh, man. But we've seen the mayor go into oh, IT. Line. We've mm -hmm. seen judicial stalking the mayor. Mm -hmm. Here we see the mayor visiting Walker. Any idea of which of these places, or there was another place, I guess she went into mechanical, she had lunch at the place with the, uh, with, in the beautiful garden. Any idea who is responsible, if the mayor was murdered, for the mayor's murder? Yeah, Sims. It's that son of a gun, Sims. Well, that's okay. He tried he to poison her with the, he tried to poison her with the strawberry tart. She didn't get it, so then he did something at the restaurant to make sure, well, she's eating or drinking this. Let's get her. Okay, that's your 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 choice is good old Sims. That's what I'm picking. That's what I'm picking. All right, listeners, who do you think? In the YouTube comments, go down and write on uh, tweet at us. Email hello at doublepmedia.com. The word hello at doublepmedia.com. I can't wait. Perfect. Okay, hey, Juliet finally sees the mayor. It's, it's time to do it. Da-da-da. Juliet, you're going to be sheriff. Juliet, Amelia, I don't want it. And then I love ice cold Deputy Marnes. Hallelujah. Hell yes. <laughs> oh, hell yes. So good. And Juliet, let's have a debate right now. She says her job is the most important. She's like, everybody in the silo thinks their job is most important. But no, mine is. Is she right? I mean, she's the one fixing the generator. Maybe she is right. Her job is the most important job, for sure. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the 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 idea that um, they were terrified of what would happen with only eight hours of of power outage. Right. Yeah, yeah. Her job is the most important job. Is she the only one who can do it? I mean, presumably the whole shadow system is 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 a backup system. But uh, right. let's face it, Cooper just got the damn job. So 
She hasn't had long to train him. Well, Cooper, we're going to get to it. Cooper grew up pretty quick on the job, I'd say. Even if she doesn't want the job, apparently we are going to go through with Holston's wishes, even though he was a nut job who said, I want to go out and glean. <laughs> right, right, right. And so you get his He badge. was making a lot of sense right there at the end. So let's follow everything he said. You get the badge and get this. The, no. You know, we're wondering about resources. The badge has Becker's name written on it. Like, shouldn't there just be a badge that says sheriff without a name on it so you can reuse it? Man. Well, that would be the only reason why she should be able to take the badge, because you would think the badge would go with the damn job. Well, what if it's like, well, the badge already says Becker. Here's your new job, Sheriff Juliet Becker. Well, I'll say this, Bubba. Yeah. Two remarks I had about this that were uh, shortly wiped away, but I'm still going to say them because I bothered to write them down. I said, is there something hiding in the badge? Ooh, very smart of you. I can't believe you figured that out. That's not like you at all. (laughs) No, it's not like me at all. And I thought, well, that was a long walk for a short conversation. Yes, it really, really was. But, you know, it was a even it feels like even before the conversation, the mayor had seen her being a woman of action, a leader down in the silo fixing the generator. She probably talked to Walker and got a thumbs up from Walker. And so I think the mayor was already convinced even before their talk. I mean, we joke, but the truth is. Yeah. Yes, the recommendation was made right before he said, I will voluntarily go outside. People want other candidates for this. She's really putting herself on a limb here. This does not seem, you know, objectively, this is not a great idea. Because obviously this job has politics. And, and this Juliet is like... Oh, she's not political her light at all. touch is with a wrench. And I'm not sure she's a great detective either. She was given the badge, but it's actually Deputy Hank who says, you know, if you look on the back, there seems to be a clue stitched into the back. Juliet, what do you think about this? Maybe she didn't she even notice bring, it. Good work, Detective Juliet. Bring Hank with her. <laughs> right. Bring Hank up top. I'm down with it. Okay. Yeah, you be my shadow. In other words, you tell me how to do my job while you are my shadow. Now, we find out she says, hey, I'll take the job. Obviously, the clue makes her want to take the job. But she has one condition. She wants to fix the generator. She believes she's the most important. The generator is too important. She needs to fix it. But to fix it, as we keep pointing out, you got to take the generator down. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, man. And everyone is going to be in the dark. And it is going to be a party, Bubba. (laughs) It is going to be a party. Which reminded me, I'm just going to say the punchline to one of my favorite jokes. Okay. Well, I'll give you the setup for it. The guy says... (laughs) Who's going to be at this party? And now the guy says, just you and me. (laughs) Great party. Great joke there, Catfish. Great joke. uh, Everybody on YouTube is like, there is liquor in what he's drinking. That's for sure. Okay, so at 8 p.m. sharp. 8 p.m., we're going to shut down the generator. You don't want to do it a bit later when everybody's asleep. No, we're going to shut it down right at 8 p.m. Bernard, he sees the announcement on on his system, and he... Not happy. Bernard is like, oh, no, wait, you're taking down my servers to hell with you. Well, Bubba. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned 8 p.m. When they, I guess you could say, okay, some people look outside at the windows and it's like, okay, sometimes it's just completely dark and sometimes we can see the desolation. But, you know, they're not they're not farming. They don't rely on sunlight for anything. It wouldn't seem to me that that that, that kind of awake and sleeping hours that we have would be important at all. Well, you've got to be on some sort of rhythm, I assume. So it it probably is easier to get everybody on a rhythm of, okay, now we're awake, now we're asleep. And so I I think that still makes sense to me. All right. Well, I mean, the other thing you can do, though, is you can be like uh, it is on a submarine so that people share resources like bunks and et cetera. So you've got some people working. You know, you've got people working like three different shifts. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, yeah, maybe you got me. We get a little bit of this uh, character Shirley, who had climbed into the bed earlier. I joke that she provides the Star Wars Death Star reactor speech. All right, there's this speech we have to do here. We don't know where the st- steam comes from. Thank the founders. I mean, we got to do this. We got to do that. She's got to lay out the stakes for the audience to know what this generator fix means. Also, I love that 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 Juliet's like, yep, to the mayor. Yep, I know exactly what I'm going to need to do. We're going to shut this thing down for eight hours. Everything's going to be fine. 
And then no, not um, eight hours. No. Oh, I thought they were going to shut it down for. I thought it was going to be. They thought they wouldn't have power for eight hours. Well, that was that was the initial pitch. Yeah, that's what they feared. Right. right. And then but, and then Shirley says you can't do it. Right. And my point is, Juliet presented this idea to the mayor as if she completely thought out this plan and knew exactly what she was doing. And it turns out she didn't know Jack. She's no, really no, going to no, be no, a great no, sheriff. No. Catfish, you know this how is her you, area of expertise. Catfish, you know when your boss asks you how long it's going to take for you to do something, you always tell him way more time. She knew it was going to take half an hour, but she said, no, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, eight hours. Guys, we're going to do this in 30 minutes top. It's perfect. <laughs> and then she selects, okay, who's going to help me go get up near these, you know, deadly rotating blades? Hmm, who do I hate the most and punch? Oh, hey, Cooper, come with me. R.I.P. Cooper, I'm thinking, dear Lord. And oh, snap, a moment that in, you know, we're focused on the generator. Everybody's going to panic. The police are telling people, hey, you got to stay calm, stay indoors, no craziness. People are gathered up in what safety zones, which include the cafeterias. And oh, snap, as they take down the power, something happens on the big video screens in at least one cafeteria mm -hmm. where suddenly that desolate wasteland outside it flickers away, and for uh, what felt like a good two seconds, like why isn't everybody in the cafeteria going crazy? Yeah, suddenly on the screen is a beautiful green, blue sky, green, luscious grass and tree shot of the outdoors. Holy smokes! Well, Bubba, I just have to say, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but I don't know where it would look like that uh, at eight p.m. at night. Hawaii, that's where it looked. Like. Still dark in paradise. No, it's paradise. no, it's never because you know the sun is always stays out later in the summer than in the winter. Hawaii is so close yeah. to the equator, there's no such thing as summer and winter. It's just paradise. Sure, sure. This brought to you by the Maui Tourism Board. <laughs> <laughs> Come see Oprah's estate. <laughs> okay, so this is it. I mean, this is crazy. Coop, we gotta go up and we gotta fix this blade. And, oh, snap, one of these blades is just completely gone. Like, one of these blades is, like, really effed up. You don't want to make a replacement blade ahead of time? I guess, once again, it's tough to tell what type of resources they have. She didn't know what have. she was doing, Bubba. She just came up with this plan out of her butt. And, you know, Cooper, he goes up with her. They've got to rip this blade out. They've got to unbend it. They've got to, you know, force it back to its proper shape. Holy smokes. Now, Sims, who has always been presented as a heavy in the two brief scenes we've seen him of, we have a very brief scene, he, scene here where Sims goes and cat, finds his kid. And he's like, listen, it's going to be OK. The dark's nothing to be afraid of. Here, he, he's, a, he's a heavy. He's a thug. But he's a thug who loves his kids. Well, Bubba, it's funny that you mention that. Is that and we see an old man who needs help. I didn't know the <laughs> light was going to be turned off. It's like, all right, well, whatever. I'm surprised we didn't see more. Give us a picture, a bigger picture of what's going on here. Considering yeah. there's this many floors, it really feels like so far this feels a little confined. You're, like, I'm like, I don't know why they're walking. It really seems like there's only like four floors worth of worth of stuff going on here. Well, there's so I'm, many floors, but maybe if you tell everybody to go home or go to a safety zone, because so many may be specifically related to you know offices or farms or parks or restaurants, you know. Maybe really of the 140, maybe people are only li living on 20 of them. So you only have to care about 20. Maybe. I mean, it's, they have. Well, if they were only living on 20, you think they would f focus, they would they would squish everybody together on those 20 so that they could, well, oh, oh, you got to tend to everything. But, but still, it feels like a small world. And I guess what, what I really want to say is I'm missing, there's some unrest here, Bubba. Oh, yeah. Are you telling me people didn't take advantage of the dark? Oh, to yeah. To create more unrest. Man, it's a great time to trade relics. Where's George? Oh, yeah, he's dead. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, it's a perfect time to, like, uh, you know, look around for random tools to Yeah, to of use course. To, <laughs> yes. to fix uh, the inside of someone's head with. <laughs> now, it's a great time for all that, but it's also a great time for love. Nighttime mm -hmm. is the right time, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Deputy Marnes is sketching a picture of the mayor. Mm -hmm. They go out to the stairwell. He's already told her over lunch, you know, after I retire, I'm going to go open up a mm -hmm. stall on the market where I draw stuff for people. And mm -hmm. maybe if somebody's blind, they'll like it. And then the mayor, she's like, you know, maybe if I don't run for 
re-election, I'll open up a stall next to a guy who does some drawings. And then it's smooch time. Hey, it could be the end of the world if the generator doesn't come back. Let's do it. But, but you are never too old to get it. Never. No. My only question is, do they have a flashlight or something so they can get back to the park? Oh, hell yes. Because obviously the sheriff, he's got a picadillo about public sex in the park. He can't <laughs> stop thinking about it. No. Now, Juliet abandons her post on the generator because she's like, okay. Perfect the steam, material. It's, heat, it's heated up <laughs> faster than we could. So we've got we've to cool down, I guess, this uh-huh. uh, chamber. And so she's going to take a water hose and go in and cool it down. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, I'm thinking, couldn't somebody else do this? But she's a woman of action. She's going to go do it. And it sets up a great, I guess, story callback. In last week, she was so afraid to go swimming. This week, she's going to drown herself. This guy, Teddy, he is just the worst. He, I mean, I've been, you know, we've been crapping on the Cooper, best. but Teddy cannot <laughs> fix this blade quick enough. But Cooper, the shadow, he's rising to the task. I love it. Very stressful, very crazy. Is Juliet gonna is Juliet gonna drown? So for me, this was really, really tense. Once again, I, I did like this section. Eight out of ten. Catfish, you your rating is so tough. Did you not get caught up in the generator fix? You were like, just do it. There was a zero percent chance that uh I, I mean, not only were there no stakes in this for me, well, but somebody the could only- have been- Somebody could have lost a hand to the generator fan or something. I mean, the real, the only real stakes was that, like you said, I thought, Cooper, he gone. (laughs) So, not, and I just met him. So, the fact that uh, he didn't even go, really, this was a whole lot of hullabaloo for nothing. Man, catfish. All right, listen, they fix it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's happy. What Mm -hmm. I think is most interesting. Is Juliet seems a bit depressed. I think, I suppose, one of the reasons why she's depressed is it's yep. hitting her. Okay, I made this deal. Now I got to go be sheriff. Yeah, she goes to Walker and does the worst apology you've ever heard of. I, I've sure. given apologies bad, and even I've been better than this. I mean, this is a this is a non-apology apology. Besides that, she says, "Hey Walker, while I'm leaving, fix this crap George found." <laughs> I mean, hey, what do you think of this good? Goodbye. I mean, they're they're not what? really going away. It's just one, mean, one person's a hundred floors above you. Yeah, but obviously Walker's never seen her other best friend, the mayor, in all this time. <laughs> and then Juliet says to her, "The only way you'll get out of here is feet first. Oh man! Ouch! What a friend! And then Walker says, yeah. "Don't end up like George." I wanted Juliet to say, "Touche." <laughs> Okay, now, mm-hmm. Bernard is unhappy that the power went out. He's really unhappy about Juliet Catfish. What do you think about Bernard? He's a dick. What? <laughs> How about Shirley's upset? You know, she, she didn't get to canoodle with Juliet at all. She just has to say goodbye. That's what happens. You know, you got to take advantage. Well, you know, you got to get a Strike while the steam is hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we see the the clue that Deputy Hank found. The flip side of the sheriff's badge, it has the word truth scratched in it. That's enough for her. Juliet wants answers. She wants truth. It's not enough for me, Bubba. And that's another reason why I rated this episode low. Truth. Oh, my God. That is such a horrible, horrible thing to get somebody to motivate it by. I go, oh, my God, truth. Yes, I'm going to throw my whole life away. What if she had flipped over the badge and scratched in it was just cash? Would that <laughs> would that convince you? I don't I mean, know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. Well, back uh, somehow the mayor, who is this old lady, has somehow climbed these hundred. What is it? Forty four hundred flights of stairs. She gets back to her office. She signs for the record. Juliet will become the sheriff. And it feels like, hey, now that the work is done, Marnes, let's get busy, pick a good bottle of liquor. Mm-hmm. And then, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. She's Decides like, to kill herself instead rather of having than be sex with, with Marnes. Marnes. <laughs> yep, yep. Terrible. Terrible. No, obviously, I would say, you know, people don't just burst out blood out of their mouths. Who knows? Maybe the silo is a bit different. Maybe that's how you go. But it sure feels like. This was not natural causes, catfish. Whoa. Well, 
let's just say who third would... episode third person to die third person who could have died we had uh I guess uh, we had um, Allison possibly dead at the first episode in her cleaning. Colston possibly dead in his cleaning in episode two. It feels like, you know, she's an old lady. Can she come back from this? Did the mayor, a third character to die in episode three? What do you think? I'm surprised that they uh, didn't get to her sooner. Either judicial wasn't efficient enough, Mm -hmm. but she'd already signed the paperwork. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, that doesn't mean that all is lost if you're the person who didn't want Juliet to become the sheriff because now she's the sheriff, but she's got no protection. Right. So you can now, manipulate and, and, and her. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, it, it could be that it's not just Juliet. It's like maybe the mayor really had been playing ball with judicial or whomever at all. And Juliet is a symbol for, for wh- whoever this person is, is that, Hey, the mayor has gone rogue. <laughs> and so maybe that's it. Maybe it's Marnes who was like, oh, no, I really don't want to get busy with this lady. (laughs) I don't want her. What's the best way for her not to find out about my ED? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hey, that's our take on episode three machines. Listeners, we're going to go over your feedback in a bit, but there are hundreds of you. We know hundreds and hundreds of you who have not given us your feedback, and we really do care. Your opinion is just as important as ours, more important than ours, and we want that to be part of the discussion here on The Cleaning Podcast at Double PHQ. The word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, at Double PHQ. YouTube, you guys have been leaving a lot of great comments. We need you to leave more comments. We want to hear what you think. Catfish, hey, let's get to it. Let's have another judicial debate oh my god this one is very exciting bubba i'm so excited i want you to read this one the question is the debate is yeah we saw this episode Mm -hmm. who got in the most steps okay the mayor went down all those steps and she took side trips remember she took a side trip into it she took a side trip to go into maternity ward she you know went over to see walker she got on a lot of steps or was it Deputy Marnes, who did all those flights, then, you know, uh, probably had to, you know, do a, a, a treadmill to find some liquor to get the mayor drunk. Was right. It... Well, no, he did. He went on the down, the, 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 the down below has their own special treadmill. Right. Was it Sims who did the most steps? He had to go down a bunch of flights from judicial to deliver a strawberry tart and then run back up to his boss and say, OK, the tart didn't work. Then run back and tuck in his kids. Or was it Cooper, the Silo's Ninja Warrior competition winner? Oh, oh my man, that I is love a tough this one, judicial Bubba. debate. Catfish, you heard it. Who got in the most steps? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's Cooper. I'm gonna say it's Cooper, up mm-hmm. and down, all over. Cooper, you know maybe you know yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say he burned the most calories though. Oh, I don't know. Okay, you know Marnes. He burned a lot of calories breaking open that door. You know, that was like um, <laughs> that burned through some calories. So I'm going with Deputy Marnes. OK, maybe maybe now, Sheriff. No, I guess if she signed the sheet and it's Juliet. How about he did he have it the worst? He was going to have a romantic time, I suppose, more times with the mayor. He lost. So he had it worst, right? He he lost the the woman he was interested in. Now he's got to work for Juliet, and he really didn't seem too happy about that. The Marnes not only had the most steps, he had the most L's taken in this episode. That's my well, thought. I'm I'm presuming yeah. that uh, Holston was a very good friend of Marnes. Yeah, right. They seem to have a good relationship. So so let's go over Marnes' recent life. Sure. His very good friend decided he'd rather go out and die and clean rather than hang out with him. And then he's just about to get the first action he's gotten in 30 years. Oh, yeah. And she got on. So Marnes definitely had it the worst this episode. Not good. That's for sure. Poor Marnes. We love you. Okay, now, Bubba, Catfish. Yeah. We can't go on without the next very important thing. And these are the double Qs. Wait, double Qs? Yeah, Catfish questions. Pause These are grimace. questions about the episode yes. or just questions for Bubba to answer based on things that happened in the episode, Bubba. So I got two sure. of them for you tonight. Let's hear them. What are your questions? What's the longest you've ever gone without having to fix something mechanical? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Catfish. That is a wonderful question. 
the, that I'm going to already change and say without having to. How about this? The longest I've gone when I should have fixed something and I did it. Yes. I So I got a car when I graduated college. It was a new car at the time, but it was a complete hunk of junk, the Chrysler LeBaron. <laughs> I kept this car running for dang near 18 years. No, it was only 15, but it felt like 18. This car was a complete hunk of junk. This car... There was no way it could pass smog checks because at times it was like I was I was a super spy because so much smog and smoke was coming out of the back of my car that the car behind me couldn't see anything. And so that's the longest I've ever gone. It's shameful. I, I will not pollute like I did with that terrible Chrysler LeBaron convertible ever again. Well, Bubba, mine is with a car, too. I don't know if this is cheating or not, but I got one of those electric Fiats. I've Ooh. had it for three years and I've spent $50 on it total. Man, it's never broken down. I think they, finally I need to put some new tires on it. I, I bought white. Are they a sponsor? They got a no. sponsor if they're going to get this love. They should be. All right, Bubba, here's catfish question number two. Number two. What job have you had that you were least qualified for? The current job I'm in. The current job I'm in. And I don't mean podcast host. I'm also not qualified for that. A lot of industries, you know, for the last. 30 years maybe, have been moving to digital. And I have a lot of digital skills. And I mentioned I'm a bit of an engineer. I don't want to go too deep into it. But I didn't know about a lot of things about this specific job. Like I didn't know about online advertising or anything, which was a big part of the job. So the reason why they hired me, I think, is because it's such a miserable job. Nobody else wants to do it. And so this is the job that I've taken that I'm the least qualified for. How about you? Well, Bubba, I have been working for the same place for about 30 years, so I oh, would wow. definitely say it's this job right oh, now, okay. for sure, Man. for sure. Hey, listeners, are we qualified to be podcast hosts? We know we're not. Yell but at more us. qualified to, this, to do this than our regular jobs. That's true. Okay, hey, we want to hear from you at Double PHQ YouTube comments. Let's give them to them. Or you can reach out to us at facebook.com slash Double PHQ in this first comment came on our Facebook page and it's from somebody who is a bit negative, uh, admittedly on different episodes than you were catfish, but Jacques on Facebook wrote the second episode was a waste of time. Five minute content dragged out for an hour. How many times did we see Juliet say he was murdered in the second episode? Do we really need to see people walking up and down the stairs so many times? I find that all shows on Apple TV drag on and on after the first episode. That's Jacques' take. Oh. Now, Jacques, I, I'll say that I mm -hmm. you, you heard my review of episode two, Jacques. I was very tough on it. But for me, specifically about the people going up and down the stairs, I think you should show that. Like, we're viewers. We're like, how do people really live and operate in this silo? Yeah. And admittedly, you know, it may seem silly to see people going up and down stairs, but that's how they live. So I, I don't mind that part of it. What do you think about Jacques' comments, Catfish? I mean, I'm with him on uh, complaining about Juliet uh, like a broken record. But I, I do think that we we need to get an idea. It, it's so funny sometimes when you think about how easy it is to get around the world. And then you think yeah. about people in the 1500s, et cetera, they could they would walk or, or ride a horse. And, it, you know, how everything is so close now. So I think to really give you an idea of how long it takes to get everywhere is important, except for the fact that. We skip over a lot of it, actually. Yeah, we do. We've got people. We got people go all the way down and come all the way up in the same episode without a sense of like, you know, people are like, how tiring the it things, would be. Well, no, not just that. People are like, the longer things go without a share, the more horrible it is. Don't worry about it. I'm right on it. After I take four days to walk down and another four <laughs> days to walk back up, we're gonna take care of this asap. Yeah. Ooh. All right now, Bubba. I yeah. need to read my favorite piece of feedback ever. Let's hear it. From Let's YouTube, it. Anita Mulman, who says, yeah. not my kind of entertainment, so I unsubscribe. Thank Ouch. you, first of all, because you cannot unsubscribe unless you subscribe. Thank you, Anita, who is not hearing this because you unsubscribed. <laughs> Listeners, tell us ways we can make the podcast better. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review there. I'm pretty sure you can leave reviews on Spotify, other things. Yeah. Tell us at hello at doublepmedia.com. We're happy to hear from you. Now, the other side of, of Anita and Jocks, who are kind of negative, Teabagger08 on YouTube 
wrote, the first three episodes are great. So, hey, Catfish, here's somebody who, like you, loved the first two episodes, but unlike you, loved this third one as well. All right. And Elias Sideways, a good loyal listener, said, I really like both episodes. Talking about the first two, the structure was a bit funky with both main characters of episode one, you know, but it didn't bother me. Oh, good. Episode two very naturally introduced more characters to follow. The atmosphere atmosphere is great. I like the pacing. Definitely one of the better premieres for a new show for a while. So excited for the next episode. Wait, it's out. What am I doing? Aww. I'm glad, Elias, that you had time to write the review before you watched the third episode. Very smart. Hey, Peter Connolly on YouTube wrote, and he's our friend from Australia. He said, when George was trying to open the hard drive, how come he never got a message like, you need Windows Media Player 10 to access this drive. <laughs> now, Peter has some worries. He says, I do worry the show will be able to keep up the excitement as the series progress. Some of the first episode was a bit dull. Sends a bunch of people out to clean those damn dirty windows. He considers that dull, but he says, LOL, at the end of that. Thank you, Peter. Well, we love it. Peter, I hope you were completely thrilled by all the time spent fixing the damn generator. Hey, now. Great. Okay. All right, Big Will, 1919-19, says, could someone explain the reason behind a sanctioned relationship if the ladies can't get pregnant without permission? Well, this Big Will, I think the show needs to explain. Catfish, any ideas why a silo would say you have to be in a sanctioned relationship, especially if, you know, you can't have kids? What do you think? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely a caste system in this silo. We've got the oh, yeah. up toppers and then down belows and never the twain shall meet. You know, it's a big deal that I think it's a, it was a selling point for the mayor it could have been that juliet used to be an up topper so it's not like she's not just just a dirty well, that's true grunge fest so uh, maybe they're you know looking to reinforce that and also it's like if you're into eugenics you're like well not only do we want like only the snooty people with the snooty people but those people who are good with their hands they need to have sex with other people who are good with their hands so that we can keep this generator running so that we never have to fix it in three thousand years Cooper's so young. He's going he's gonna to grow into the job. We got yeah. this feedback from Surf, who asks the question, where are all the old people? This place is magically populated with all young and fit folks. Now, I think Surf missed, wrote this before this episode, so I love that feedback, Surf. So this episode was specifically for you with the mayor and Deputy Marnes getting all the love. I mean, all the people in charge, the mayor, Deputy Marnes, I mean... Uh, uh, IT, uh, Bernard's Bernard, got hair, yeah. Bernard, we got, uh, yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I do like that comment, and I'm going to keep an eye on that in the future to see if there's something, if they uh, put them out to pasture, a.k.a. feed the cows. <laughs> Here's feedback uh, on YouTube from somebody whose handle is The Complainer. I love it. They, they wrote Silo is the same as the Hunger Games District 13. Their flags, they didn't even try to change the flags of the Hunger Games District 13. And then the complainer wrote, another woman with gray hair is fine, but also the same as Julianne Moore. <laughs> I don't know how to spell, and I'm 32 years old, and I won't try <laughs> to. <laughs> ah. Catfish, does this remind you of the Hunger Games anyway? Yes, I guess it is. You know, you that you put people in the Hunger Games, and spoiler for the Hunger Games, they may die, and and that keeps people in line. Maybe cleaning is the same as the Hunger Games. So, okay, well, it's, it it didn't seem the same to me because the Hunger Games is kind of like uh, it's entertainment, and this one yeah. is really just for maintenance. Mm-hmm, I agree. No one's okay. really excited to watch that. Twitter, we've got Stephen Jenkins at Stephen L Jenkins says, "OMG, is that Tim Robbins?" I hope that's makeup and hair dye. Otherwise, I might start feeling a tad bit old. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, Stephen. <laughs> I'm sure he's wearing makeup, but that is not hair dye. Whoa. Our good friend, Laura McMillian, who we're going to have some feedback from her in the spoiler book talk later, she says, episode three. Well, that was tense. Ooh, I Ooh. assume that means she likes it, Catfish. Yeah, and Endless Mike at Endless Mike 03, who I got into a tiff with. Oh, no. On Twitter. No, I'm just kidding. I a just uh, twiff? he he agreed with you and and disagree with me. So okay. that's that's that was a twist. He said episode three, steaming hot episode nine out of ten double A's. Wait, double A's. Anxiety attacks. Ooh. So once again, endless Mike O3 and I locking horns. Oh, well, just different of opinion. Nothing wrong with that. We also got this bit of feedback when I was like, Hey, how did you guys feel about episode three? Somebody noticed a spinning top, Devin. <laughs> 
Beetle, who's at Devin two eight seven Marvel on Twitter, just wrote back with a GIF of DiCaprio from um, from uh, Inception, going, "What the love it, love it." Our good old friend Matt Murdock says, "I got to say the whole generated repair sequence was really well done in episode three, and had me on the edge of my seat the entire time." Matt mm. was is someone who's, you know, they say you need a willing suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. Matt was ready to believe that this was wasn't actually going to work. Man, hey, for all our listeners who know our good buddy Double M Matt Murdock, who's does musical analysis on all our podcasts, he also. Is it one of a host on many of our podcasts? Matt is a wonderful musician, and if I'm not mistaken, uh-huh. there's a chance he's touring Europe with his music this summer and uh, playing for bands and stuff. And so, follow Matt at Musical Concepts on Twitter. And if you're one of our European listeners, go check out Matt. It's going to be real fun seeing him sparkle, you know, twinkle the keyboards. I love it. Hell yeah! And if you go see him in concert, mm-hmm. I am making this vow. If you go yeah. see him in concert. And you talk to him afterwards, he will give you your own personal Matt Murdock's musical analysis. <laughs> if you say, I want he the will. quadruple he M, will. he'll give it to you. He will. Hey, that's going to be it on the TV talk because we're going to go to the book spoilers. The book okay. spoilers will have two sections. One that's kind of generally talking about how what we saw in episode three played out in the books, but it really won't be too many spoilers, what I would consider spoilers. But hey, if you want to jump out now we totally understand later on there will be a spoiler section if you're going to jump out now we want to say we've said it so many times we do want to hear from you at double phq twitter instagram facebook.com slash double phq youtube keep giving us these great comments even like anita's comments we love it anita you'll never know how much i appreciated that because you unsubscribe Catfish, nobody has written in the comments about uh-huh. your hilarious background. So you've had the and you've had corn for the corn, corn silo. You've got the solo cup for solo silo solo. And then you've also had Han solo. This yeah. we need some listeners to give us some love on these on these backgrounds. They're really good. Yeah, give me any suggestions too, although I oh, do yeah. have some ideas. I think we might branch out. 